What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the La Liga career mode, it's episode number 32 returning today with the season finale as we go for our first ever European honour, uh, taking on Juve in the Champions League final, the new boys versus the old lady, I love that matchup there, uh, obviously in the group uh, we finished runners up to Borussia Dortmund after beating PSG made it to the quarters, uh, PSV turned out to be tricky opponents in the end but still made it through and after our victory over Liverpool in the last episode, Juve beating Milan in an all Italian affair. Uh, we set up this CL final, first in history, obviously, uh, against these two teams here at Old Trafford. Uh, for those curious, by the way, I showed this briefly in the last episode at Juve. As I always say, take the league tables with a pinch of salt. Uh, they are third season over and finished uh, in third after three teams finished on the same amount of points. How crazy is that? So, so tight. So, weird league champions of our uh, country, they finished third. And their team, to be fair, is is, is really solid. I'll, I'll show you the full squad they've got as well before we dive into the game. Um, and it's a five-star team, obviously. And I would definitely say it's an even CL final as well. Uh, between the sticks, still have Restes, uh, one of the best young goalkeepers in the game. French shot stopper now, 22 years old. Uh, in their defence, they've got Bongiorno, Cambiasso, uh, Jaio, who's a really good Portuguese centre-half in this game as well. I don't know why his full scout report isn't there. Luca Pellegrini's there, as is Deo uh, Upamecano as well. As for their midfield, Federico Chiesa is still there now, 85 overall. This guy all always scores against me, so definitely put your money on him having the FGS in this game here. Douglas Louise is there, as is Kingsley Coman, now 85 overall. they also got Bruno Guimar Reyes, 87 overall. Coop Miners is there as well at 84 overall. And Kostic is now coming towards his declining years, but still there. Locatelli is there, 86 overall. Weston McKenney, the American, is still there as well. Aroz has moved on uh, at 83 overall as well. So it's it's a fantastic midfield with, this is what I was waiting for, their star player. Federico Valverde uh, moving on from Real Madrid, 92 overall. If you watch me for more than five minutes, you will know I think this guy is one of the most underrated superstars, if that makes sense, in world football today. He does not get as much credit as he deserves, man. This guy is an absolute world-class player. And as for their striker, they've got Liam Delap there, but Kubo is there as well, moving on from Real Sociedad. Randall Colo Mouani uh, is there at 86 overall as well. And they also have Milik. Uh, they've got Matthias Sule, a, a young talent as well, now 24 years old, and Dusan Vlaha which is still there as well. So for the play me, this is an amazing team. And as we head into the final as well, Bakayoko says he is fit and ready to play on the back of a three-month injury. It's, it's a gamble. It's a gamble to play him. So I'll, uh, I'll, I'll certainly consider it, but I don't know whether I'll, uh, I'll, I'll start him or not. But uh, just heading into the game, I, I get asked quite often uh, about my, my sliders and, and, and what settings I use. As I always said, they're, they're default and untouched on 50. I used to adjust them game by game. Uh, but now I don't, and that's probably just four minutes here, uh, but now I don't because the game has become a lot more difficult. So beforehand, I used to adjust these game by game, but now, again, the, the game has become a lot more challenging for me, so I feel like just keeping it at 50 and staying on ultimate is uh, is good enough for me. The injury frequency and severity, by the way, is still untouched since we changed it midway through last season, 77.54 for the user, but um, yeah, everything else is uh, on the default untouched 50. And heading into the game, I have seen Vasic is slightly tired for the game. I don't know why. Sometimes, do you guys ever notice, it's like sometimes one of your players, just one, one of your players is like half stamina for the next game. And I, I, I can never work out why. I don't understand why he's lost all that energy there. It's not like he's recovering from injury. But back Yoko, I, I don't think I'll start him. But I will have him on the bench. Although, to be fair, with Vasic going down in terms of energy... What I could do is play Bakayoko on his normal right-hand side and have Delefe right through the middle as a C-A-M. That's not a bad shout out. I think I make one last stitch alteration due to Vasage's tiredness. Mate, what, what were you doing last night? <laughs> Seriously. Actually, don't answer that. I don't want to know. But uh, other than that, I will uh, keep the team as it is. We're missing Capete and Camelo, of course. But other than that, it will be our, uh, our strongest possible lineup for it. Heading into the game. So, you know, to be honest here, like, one thing I want to touch on real briefly before, briefly before we get into the game is how frustrating it is that there are no more lineups shown. Now, I know I haven't discussed this much since FC 24's release, but there are lots of things EA got right for this year's game. This is something they really got wrong. I don't know why they took this out. 
I understand not everyone uh, needed it, not everyone, you know, would, would, would watch them, but to me, it completely takes away from the occasion, mate. It's a bloody CL final, and there's no sort of uh, introduction, if you will. No walkout, no nothing. It's ridiculous. But for those curious, this is Juve's lineup for the game. It is a 3 5 2 with one DM. You've got Chesney between the sticks still there. The back three is Bongiorno, Uber Meccano, and Thiago Gio. Okay, there's his overall 82. Uh, Locatelli is their anchor man. And the midfield four is Timothy Ware on the right. Valverde and Guimar Reyes through the middle. What a South American duo that is through the middle. And Chiesa on the left. And the top two, Vlahovic and Colo Moani. First and only game, CL final, Old Trafford, dead even, I would say. Won't be too disappointed if we don't win it, but I'm going to be going for that league and European double. Foul sound area. Don't get me wrong, I, I understand not everyone, like, watched the, uh, the, the pre-match animations, the lineups getting shown, the walkout from the tunnel and so on and so forth. And I don't mind the, um, the premonitions that are shown as well for what might happen in the game. Because we're going back quite a long time here. But back in like FIFA 06, FIFA 07, they did that. It was really cool. They'd, they'd, they'd show the players lining up in the tunnel. And then they'd have like a, uh, oh, this might happen. You know, I might get the winning goal or whatever. I thought that was really, really cool. Uh, so I don't mind that being in the game. But you're not even going to have like lineups shown or a tunnel walkout for the Champions League final. Are you serious? It's Gary Vega! With the opener, puts Almeria in front. Well, maybe no pre-match lineups, but you knew this guy was going to start our highest rated player. And it's only fitting he opens the scoring. Top bins and in front early. A little bit of a scramble, but Delefeu to Vega. Gabri from Gerard, And we're in front inside the first 20 minutes. Vega with the opener, first in Europe. What a time to get it. Quite a poor first half, this, despite holding on to a one-goal lead. If we can see how the first half still leading, that will be big here, because defensively, we've looked pretty solid. Back four's been strong. And, you know, our success has been built on strong defence, man. Best defensive record in the league two years in a row. And right now, a shutout here and a shutout in the second half. We'll see a shutout Juve and win that CL. 45 minutes away. It's been an, aw it's been an awful final, guys, <laughs> I'll be honest. But as things stand... We're doing it the Almeria way, through tough defence. And Juve making their first change as Kubo comes on for Timothy Weyer, just two minutes after the uh, the restart. I decided not to go with Dion Lopi for this game. Now, as you know, ordinarily I, I, I start him in all my big games. But in this one, decided to be aggressive, and, and, and so far the early goal speaks for itself. I've got him on the bench if I need him to see out the game. He's played every CL game for us this season, so... I'm sure at some point I'll bring him on. If we go 2-0, that would be massive. Nunez drags Bongiorno across. Rolls it back in. Bakayoko shot deflected and headed away. In what has been a very uneventful game. Oh! <laughs> Streets won't forget. Gerald Delefeu, assist, goal, and probably the goal in the entire save. Top bins, 2-0, absolute baller. 15 minutes to go, it's been an awful CL final, absolutely awful. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, I do find three at the back systems quite easy to play against, so I'm not too surprised about this really. You know, they've got a great team but the formation is one of those which I do find quite simple to beat because there's, al there's always a free man when, when, when there's a, f a back free back free centre arse and you haven't got wing backs you've got wide midfielders there's, there's always space I mean once you beat that line once you beat that midfield four or midfield five there's, there's always there's always going to be a free man there's always room on the pitch to move into so it, it really isn't too hard to get goals against in this system. But to be fair, defensively, it's been a pretty solid a solid game. Haven't allowed them through one bit. But again, this is this is what I mean here. There's, once you beat that midfield, look at the space here. Look at the space on the pitch. Look at the three red shirts. Ramazani bends one and couldn't do what Delefeu did not score. But it's it's over. It's, it's, it's completely over. Well, we've had some incredibly tough times in this save we've had some incredibly tough games in this save but in the end in the biggest of the entire save we're going to run out very comfortable 2-0 winners to win 
our first ever Champions League. A bit anticlimactic, if I'm being honest here. But to be fair, I, I, I'm going to downplay it a little bit because it is true. I, I tend to beat three at the back systems reasonably comfortably because once you beat the midfield and you've just got three CBs to deal with, no wing backs to worry about, no full backs coming in to help out, and a back three to get stretched as well. It can be quite simple to exploit and beat. This game was one of those cases. The goals were superb, don't get me wrong. But in the end, it's a comfortable win as Almeria Champions League winners. Yep, as Edgar lifted aloft, it is over, season done, save done, no doubt about it with the league and European done. Would have been nice with a treble, but we've won all three of the major honours we were most concerned about in this save. The league, the cup, last season and the Champions League this year for a league and European double as well. I have to apologise for the ending, it was such a poor game, really, really poor and it was a bit of an anticlimactic end, all things considered, but... Yeah, it's, it's just one of those things, man, like when, when a team do play free at the back, it's it's really easy to, to, to beat. Once you beat that defence, that midfield line, sorry, once you're in behind it, it's so easy to stretch those three centre-halves out. And it means there's loads of space on the pitch. There's always going to be a free man to pass to with them not being able to cover four or five offensive players you've got coming forward. And in the end, a comfortable 2-0 win is reflected in the stats. Juve didn't even take a shot in the game. It really was that simple. It's funny because we've been talking about how in this save it's been a very difficult one. It certainly has been. This has been my most difficult FC by far. So a bit ironic that the final game, the ECL final, was a very comfortable win. But in the end, job done mainly. I've got to be honest here. Take, taking it a bit away from, from my own performance, it was mainly because the, the, the formation was just too easy to beat, really. But um, to be fair, the goals are brilliant. Vegas strike was fantastic, but this was the big one. <laughs> Our telephone. Oh my goodness. At least, if nothing else, in what was quite a poor and routine CL final, if you will, we got to see the final goal of the save be scored by the finest man in the save, Gerard Delafay, with without a shadow of a doubt. The goal of the save. That is, to be fair, a really cool way to close it out. Even if the final wasn't very great, even if it was routine, the fact we scored the best goal of the save. That with the final goal of the save, I, I think it's quite a nice touch, to be fair. And the fact it comes through the, the player of the save, no doubt about it, Gerard Delafoe. Granted, this year, we took away his number nine to give it to Darwin Nunez. He operated in more of a uh, reduced role, even though due to injuries, he ended up starting the majority of our games. He might have been downgraded by EA, but he proved that streets won't ever forget and life does not end after 30. Yeah, I tell myself that on the daily. What I, I, I could literally, honestly, I could watch that all day. Like, I literally, <laughs> I know I need to stop in a minute because I need to close out the say with the final stats of the team. But I could, oh my goodness, I could watch that all day, man. I could watch that all day. Might not be a winner in the end, but as a dagger, that is, oh my, oh, okay, one more. I'm going to do one more and then I'm, <laughs> I'm going to come back. I'm sorry, but that was just absolutely beautiful. Nunez with the header. Flicks it down, gets it out of his feet, and the, and the bend on that, absolutely beautiful. Chesney with no chance whatsoever. Job done, Almeria, Champions League winners with a 2-0 victory at Old Trafford. And so, as we get done with the post-match interview, and for the final time, leave this Almeria squad with the Champions League in the bag alongside the league title as well. Um, we will, to end the save, do one final look at who won what in the end. And uh, obviously we'll be going with a recap of La Liga for those who missed the last episode. Finishing 8 clear of Real Madrid, 12 clear of Atletico and a whopping 24 clear of Barca. Once again, best defensive record in the division. Uh, third highest scorers. But again, just like in the CL final there, our, our success is built on defense. Case closed and case proved for both the league and Europe as well. We might have been able to hold Real Madrid off in the league, but in terms of both the Supercopa and the Copa del Rey, uh, there was silverware won by Real Madrid. They beat Atletico Madrid 3-2 in the final of the Copa del Rey to win a domestic cup double this season, if you will.
As for the Europa Conference League, which is, I know I say this all the time, but it's such an interesting competition. I wasn't sure about it when it was first formed by UEFA, but I actually quite like it. Uh, in the end, Leon lost to Wolfsburg in the final, as the Germans won that this year. As for the Europa League, uh, four British teams uh, made it into the last 16, and in the end, it was an all-English final as Newcastle United lost to Aston Villa on penalties uh, in the Europa League, as Villa qualified with the Champions League that way. I think I forgot to show you how Juve um, made it into the last 16, by the way, before the game. But they were runners-up in their group, and obviously we were runners-up in ours as well. And whilst we didn't face each other all the way to the final, uh, just a refresher, if you will, of how the Champions League went in our path to the final and our path to the trophy, if you will. Not exactly an easy one, but we got the job done with a 2 0 win in the final. So let's take a look at some of the other leagues uh, around the world as well, uh, beginning with the Premier League, where Man City won out, uh, ran out champions. Uh, as they often do, uh, finishing nine clear of Chelsea. Arsenal and Brighton making it to the top four as Brighton qualify with the Champions League for the first time ever. So there'll be five teams in there next year from England. And how about this, by the way? Coventry City. I saw this during the season. Coventry City. We're back in the big time. But uh, relegated after just a one year. And I'll do the Football League as well. Uh, the Blades and the Toffees, top two, with the Saints, the Canaries, Blackburn Rovers and Birmingham City uh, making up the playoffs uh, in English uh, second tier this time around. League One saw uh, the great yo-yo team of the recent years, Rotherham United, gain promotion back to the championship again. Barnsley in second, uh, Plymouth, Lincoln, Charlton Athletic and Oxford uh, were in the playoffs in the third tier. And as for League Two, uh, the top three, Cheltenham Town, Bristol Rose, MK Dons, and the playoffs being Fleetwood, Notts County, Forest Green Rovers, and uh, Burton Albion in English's fourth tier. One of the rare times we don't see PSG win League 1 this year, as Monaco pit them to the championship by a single point. Uh, as they were able to become French champions this year. Leverkusen, champions of the Bundesliga, like they will be in real life now, for sure. The only question is whether they do it undefeated or not, after Bayern slipped up against Freiburg again last weekend. But by Leverkusen, for them to not win the title from here, it'll be worse than a bottle job that Almeria showed <laughs> a couple of seasons within this save as well. As for the Serie A, though, you saw that pre-game. Inter Milan and Juve all separated on goal difference slash head-to-head. -head. How about that, as Inter ended up tying winners and Napoli uh, are out to the top four there uh, in Italy and as for the uh, Eredivis this season PSV champions like they're sure to be in real life 19 clear of Feyenoord as well to win the Dutch top tier this season as for the Liga Portugal uh, Porto champions Benfica second and Sporting Lisbon third this year uh, in the Portuguese top tier and we'll do a couple more whilst we're here starting with the Scottish Premier League where last year we would have seen after the first phase Aberdeen World Champions I, I know by the way for those that have been pointing out in the comments it, with the Scottish Premier League they did the first phase which is 33 games and they split into two mini leagues I, I know that I, I, I know that but obviously in, in the game it, it ends after 33 and you can't, you can't see who else is there so in a way you just have to sort of say whoever was top most likely end up being champions. In this case, it, uh, it would have been Rangers holding off Celtic. And as for the second division, by the way, for those that are going up, Granada, Andalusian rivals, champions of 100 points, Centurions, Levante in second. And the players will be Girona, Real Oviedo, Deportivo Alaves, and the boys harassing Santander as well going into the playoffs this year. And a couple more whilst we're here. Uh, Turkish Super League, uh, Fenerbahce champions, Galatasaray in third, Trabzonspor in second as well. And uh, as for the MLS, which has sort of just got started uh, this year, uh, New England Revolution are the ones that are off to a red-hot start of New York Red Bulls right behind them uh, in a combination of both the East and the West in this year's MLS. Is Messi, so is Messi gone then, or is he still available? Because you remember, we saw that he hadn't retired just yet. But um, it said 12 months. I think he's got six months on his contract. No, okay, so now he'd be retiring at 39. Now down to 81 overall. Wow. 81 overall, Lionel Messi, with the worst defensive stats I think I've ever seen. But to be fair, I mean, he'd still do a job. In, uh, in the vast majority of uh, European elite teams. So, that is that then. Uh, that is that for the save. That is that for the season as well. And we'll take one final look at the squad in the end where... I have to say, what, what, what a fantastic team we built 
uh, over the course of four years, man. Absolutely brilliant squad. I, I, I love how we kept the 25-man squad limit as well for the realism too. But this this is an amazing Almeria team. And it feels right to end here because, yeah, we, we could add another superstar. We could go for a treble next season. Hey, we could try and even do an undefeated season as well. Try and win the CL back-to-back. -back. But really, this is an amazing team to close out with. It's strong everywhere. It's got the superstars. We've got one 90-rated player. But we know for next year we'd have another one or probably two with Martinez, Gutierrez, and maybe even Darwin Nunez as well. It's got some great young talent coming through as well. And what I love about the team as well, it's it's a mix of players that we inherited and players we brought in as well. Milovanovic, here when we joined. Arribas, here when we joined. Pozo, here when we joined. Um, Centelles, here when we joined. Lopi, here when we joined. Edgar, here when we joined. You know, so it's a, it's a really, really... Oh, um, no, that's it. Oh, no, Ramazani, Ramazani, here when we joined. So it's a nice mix of players that we brought in that became superstars, like your Vegas, like your Nunes's, like your Martins, and so on. But also players like Edgar, players like Ramazani that were here when we, we started, but were massively important pieces of our squad as well. So I, I really love that about an RTG. We don't just t change the entire squad and you end up with none of the players you inherited. But instead, it's a nice blend. Yes, okay, fair enough. Most of the players are players we brought in, but there's still a good core of players we inherited as well that became really important pieces within the team so we'll do one final run through of the squad together then and they'll look at some more important players such as Gutierrez who came in to replace Alex Centellas as our starting left back up to 88 overall but I'm still sure if we were to carry on hit 90 in a season as well Gutter will never get to develop Saeed Saeed so good to name him twice already 77 overall at just 19 years old but he could have been a star in this team, man. He still looks amazing anyway. Edgar, though, one of my favourite players of the entire So Four years here. We made him captain for season two onwards. Love this guy. Absolutely love him, man. Up two ratings to 86 overall. Probably wouldn't get much better now at 80 overall. Uh, sorry, 30 years old. But 86 overall. This guy was a beast. Team of the season. I think all four years as well. Or at least three of the four years. Never missed a game. 48 games, one of the most um, most played players in all the season. I think only Agra Zabala actually started more games down here. But this guy was an absolute beast, man. Started all of our La Liga games apart from one, averaging a 7.45. Started 10 of our 13 CL games. What a beast our captain was, man. And, and he was great in our back line overseeing so much change despite the fact he stayed as our, our number one CB alongside Yuri and Timber who we brought in for the season slightly disappointed he didn't grow all season long but even so still a nice partner for Red Guy in the final season together I'm not talking about Kaiki it depresses me uh, Capete was a solid little pickup in season two as was Miranda as well this guy definitely would have become the uh, the partner for Edgar as the years would have gone on even though he's got holes on his attributes he would have grown from next season onwards I'm sure again up to this year to 82 overall and uh, definitely would have became the long-term partner for uh, Edgar in the back line. Arnel Martinez, great signing from Man City. Uh, 20 clean sheets in 36 games plus three assists as well. Up three ratings to 89 overall. I think he scored one goal last season and that was it, but there's no doubt about it. This guy was on the cusp of hitting 90 and yeah, he, he definitely hit it at the beginning of next season if he were to carry on as well to join Vega as 90 plus rated players here. Uh, Dion Lopi, the anchor man. Again, the reason why this guy stopped growing, in my opinion, is because of the fact that EA just don't give enough credit to defense based players. As an anchor man, he doesn't get as much in terms of an average rating boost because he wasn't, wasn't going to score any goals, or many goals at least. But three assists in 31 isn't bad, averaging just under one in every three as a DM. 25 years old, 80 overall. Guys, if you're looking for a budget anchor man in this year's FC, Dion Lopi, with the stats he's got, 82 strength, 83 stamina, interceptions might say 79, it feels like it should be the numbers flipped around, defensively, this guy was brilliant in my team, man. And often started the big games to shore up the back line as well. Uh, you see some of the youth players here growing nicely out on loan. Quentin Timber, great signing to replace Lucas Robertoni as well. Four goals and two assists. Not great, but great CM to play alongside Gabri Vega as part of our midfield duo, if you will. As the only night rated player here. You see his full stats. Five goals and 11 assists in 37 league games. Got one in the Champions League and what a goal it was as well for the opener in the CL final. And still getting better as well. I think this guy could possibly, possibly end up hitting the mid-90s. Changes the development plan to, to any of these, just not the defensive one, because, you know, I've got a fetish for high defensive stats on any of my players. But... 
This guy, I think, gets about 93, 94, maybe even at a stretch 95 overall, and perhaps kind of best player in the world, and that about it, man. 90 overall, what a pick up he was from Saudi Arabia at the start of last season. Uh, Sergio Camelo, obviously, in the end, injuries kind of started his growth a little bit, but still grew to 85 overall. I saw it was potentially my long-term successor for Delafeu in the year we changed him to CAM. What a decision that was, man. 11 goals and 4 assists in 20 that league games. That's fantastic. A direct contribution to a goal in 75% of his league games and got 3 goals and an assist in 5 CL games as well. Not bad at all. Ariba has just stopped growing. <laughs> Which is a bit strange. Two years of no growth whatsoever, but even so, as a squad player, still gave me solid minutes. I don't fully understand that. I really don't. Granted, I've got him on balance, but even so, balance isn't that bad. Only 11 weeks. I don't know why he's not growing, but even so... Vasic though, oh my god, this is ridiculous man, you know I often say it, there's always one player in your squad that plays really well in limited game time, this is the man, our hose of Vasic, 25 years old, came back from two years in Lisbon in January, we sold Lozano to register this guy for the squad, this guy, jack of all trades and can literally play anywhere i mean there were games or i can think of at least one game where i played him as a ball playing center half because he's six foot two with solid defensive stats and whilst he is far better going forward he can defend as well as contribute going forward and contribute he did as well nine goals and three assists in 12 la liga games averaging a direct contribution to a goal in every game and he also got five assists and 11 goals in 16 in all competitions that's more than one per game. That's ridiculous. This guy, absolute baller. And guys, if you're looking for a budget buy, jack of all trades in this year's FC, this is the man to buy. He can literally do anything. He's become one of my favourite players in this year's FC. And I barely even used him in the same. He spent more time out on loan. Incredible though, man. What a baller he was. Unbelievable. Speaking of baller, this guy's up 17 overall this year. That's one of the highest overall spikes I've ever seen. That's incredible, man. As you see some of the youth players there. Uh, Ramazani, 7 goals and 6 assists in 40 in all competitions. Might not grow very much now at 26 years old. But one of the OGs has been here since the very beginning. 84 overall. And always an important important piece on that left hand side for us. Melamed grew one this year to 78 overall, which became a scored winger for us in time. I, I I fancied this guy as becoming a bit of a baller in this team. How we've been able to develop it a little bit a little bit more. But Duarte up six overall a Deportivo Alamez and Archimed grew 3 to 77 at Molyneux as well. So some of the young players developing really nicely out on loan. Shane will never get to use them. Bakayoko though, uh, two great years, 10 goals and 7 assists in 26 La Liga games. Shame the injury stunted him this year. He was on course for an amazing year and possibly another assist title as well. But yeah, the injury kind of stopped him in his tracks a little bit. But even so, still managed to go a rating to 86 overall and uh, still had a great year. Oriana, by the way, up 13 ratings as as well, man. The growth of my youth players out on loan fantastic. Whilst Delafeu might have gone down a rating this year, which you know me, man. I think it's absolutely ridiculous in my opinion. This is what EA needs to change. Granted, it's not as bad as it used to be. If you played FIFA about a decade ago, when a player hit 30, they declined rapidly. I mean, they went down like five ratings in a season. It's not quite as rapid in terms of downgrading, if you will, but why is he getting downgraded regardless? He's only just turned 33, and granted his minutes this year, we're nowhere near as good as the past two years, but seven goals and seven assists in 33 games, a weldy in the Champions League final, some of these games coming from the bench, downgrade, really? I don't understand it, Percy, on the back of back-to-back -back player of the year awards, won't get it for a third year in a row, but even so, this guy was a bust, this guy, this guy was a bust, I... <laughs> Bull idea. To be fair, he played second fiddle. And it is hard for a striker to get into a rhythm when he's playing second fiddle. But only one goal all season long and an assist as well. It's not great, is it? It's not great, to be fair. Okay, I made the wrong decision. I should have signed Albert Ruiz. I should have signed Albert Ruiz. Bit of a bust. But in the end, we didn't need him to score goals. Why is that? Because this guy did the job. I love the aesthetically pleasing stats there. 30 goals and 30 assists in 50 games. It is mad to think he had more assists than goals in the league this season. But as he won the assist title to make up for finishing third in the Golden Boot race, I called him the difference maker. I called him the missing piece in our jigsaw puzzle. Darwin Nunez, ex-Almeria player, brought him back, up a rating to 88 overall. 
And whilst he didn't score in a CL final, he got the assist for De La Feo second, and in the end had an absolutely unbelievable season. The stats speak for themselves. 60, 60 direct contributions to a goal in 50 games in all competitions. I mean, absolutely unbelievable. And it's why he wasn't just a goal scorer, but a goal provider as well. It's why we were able to win a league in European double, no doubt about it. Team effort, but let's be honest here, this guy was clearly the star of the entire team. As Matteo Martinez, we've been keeping an eye on this guy. Up five with Dane at the 71 overall. We'll never get to see him develop, but what a ball this guy could have been had we carried on the save. And that'll do it for today's episode, the season finale and the save as well, guys. So a massive thank you for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed this project with Almeri. If you have enjoyed it, then please do drop a like. A fantastic four years at the Powerwall Stadium. Really, really enjoyed it. It's my first foreign base CM of FC24 and an absolute blast. So definitely call it the first, but not the last European CM I'll do. This was an absolutely awesome save and I really enjoyed it from start to finish. Uh, thank you so much for watching. What comes next? Well, I'll have a new career beginning tomorrow morning. 11 a.m. UK time so refresh your sub box or go to my channel 11 a.m. UK time tomorrow and we'll be getting a brand new project not going to spoil it not going to let you know the team not going to let you know what it is but I'm really excited for it and it should be a lot of fun thank you for watching this save though guys I really really appreciate all the support as always I had an absolute blast with this one much love to you all and I'll see you for a brand new Karimo starting on my channel tomorrow morning